We left Star at 8am on Thursday to cover the story on the disappearance of the seven Orang Asli children. We arrived at the Gua Musang Hospital at about 2.30pm. The relatives of the missing Orang Asli children were there and had identified the remains of the first child, Sasa Sobri. It became clear that it will be a sad moment for everyone. After interviewing the father and relatives, we proceeded to get an official comment from the Gua Musang OCPD, Superintendent Saiful Bahri Abdullah. The first is that we get recently, which is quite negative, I mean to say, yeah, because it dead, brought in dead, eh? brought in dead. After we recovered the body, we had the army to comb the area, intensify the area. We, we don't want to look for a body, we are looking for a live person. We are really, really hoping that we will get a positive result. As we concluded the interviews, we were informed of a second body which was on its way to the hospital. Sepasukan sekolah pula yang terdiri daripada 10 anggota telah terjumpanya satu rangka manusia yang saiznya berbentuk anak-anak. So far, tak ada identiti pada badan tu. In fact, rangka, just rangka, tak ada pakaian yang tinggal. Kita dah comb the area. So rangka ni kita percayai ada kaitan. Jarak antara rangka yang kita jumpai ini dengan jarak yang kita jumpa mayat semalam tu lebih kurang 800 meter. As we took the shots of the remains which were kept in a sealed box, it was just the clicks of the camera that punctured the silent night as the scene left all journalists and newsmen speechless. Today, Friday, we were more optimistic that we would find survivors. Expectations were high. We were expecting to visit the sites where they recovered the earlier two bodies. We arrived at Postohoi and quickly proceeded to Sungai Perias, where we were shown where Sasa was found. As we moved to the next location, the police radio communication buzzed with excited voices. They had discovered two children who were alive, but another dead. The media went into a frenzy with the new development. The field officer, Inspector Harris, wanted such a vehicle to transport one of the girls back to Skola Menengah Kuala Betis when an ambulance was on standby to transport them to the Gua Musang Hospital. Azam asked me if I was ready to carry one of the girls on my lap. I said, of course, let's go. She was placed on my lap and the only thing that was running through my mind was how did this girl survive for the last 47 days in the jungle. As we drove back to Postohoi, I could not control my emotions when I saw the girls. She was weak, could barely speak, but she gave me a smile and held my hand tightly. Uh, we are transporting one of the survivors, one of the two survivors to Kuala Betis right now. Being a mother, I was overwhelmed with emotions, as if I found my missing child. Throughout our 30-minute journey, she was in pain and kept complaining about the sun and kept saying, Sayalapa, Sayalapa. As she was on drips, I could not offer her anything to eat. I said, Adi, you cannot eat all of that now and you will have to go to the hospital first. But I told Ima I will come and visit her before I leave to fulfil her request. I asked her, who was the friend found with her? She just kept quiet. I asked her who her parents were. She shook her head. She held my hand tightly. I felt like I had to reassure her and tell her that things were going to be fine. As we escorted the ambulance into the hospital, I know Ima is in safe hands again.